Hello, and welcome to Beanworks University. This training video will explain how to code an invoice in Beanworks. There's a lot to cover in this tutorial, so it's a little bit longer. We recommend you stop and practice along the way. If your invoices went through our overnight auto capture service, where we do most of the work for you, then you'll find those invoices waiting for you in New Status in the Invoice in Progress tab. Double clicking on the row or clicking on the invoice icon will take you to the details view where you'll see most of the information already entered on the invoice. Now it's just waiting for you to add some final coding information to complete it. Make sure you check over the information added during the overnight process, especially the invoice number, vendor, and dollar amounts. Just a quick side note that if you cannot edit the fields of an invoice and it has not yet been submitted for approval, the most common reason is that you are not the owner of the invoice and you need to take ownership of it before making any changes. Okay, let's continue with the coding lesson. The other option for invoices is that you want to create the entire invoice yourself. We recommend using the auto capture method just described so that we do the majority of the work for you. However, we understand sometimes you have rush invoices you need to process that same day. To show you how this rush invoice method works, let's head to the Create tab, select an invoice we want to create immediately, and press Create Invoices. The screen has now changed to the Details view of the invoice. The invoice is in New Status. Our coding fields here may look different from yours, as your Beanworks is configured to work specifically with your accounting solution. Your first step is to complete the Invoice Details panel. There are Text, Date, and Dollar Amount fields which need to be completed. In addition, some fields will be a list where you need to choose the correct list item. Selecting a vendor is an example of this. To find the correct vendor, type in the name of the vendor on the invoice to show the possible choices. If you turn Wildcard on, then you'll see all vendors that have your search term anywhere in the vendor name. Leaving Wildcard turned off will only show you results where the vendor name or number begins with your search term. We're going to assume this invoice is not matched to a PO for this training lesson, but we have a complete lesson on processing those types of invoices that you should watch next if you match invoices to purchase orders in Beanworks. Okay, let's skip to a point where you would have the side coding panel completed. Once completed, save your invoice. You should notice the status of your invoice has changed from new to in progress. The invoice now looks the same as if it had gone through auto capture with the line items of the invoice available to be populated. Quite possibly the best button in Beanworks for repeat invoices is the Smart Code button. If you have a previous invoice in Beanworks for a vendor invoice you are now coding, and that invoice is fully approved, then when you press Smart Code on the current invoice, Beanworks will add the line information from that other invoice automatically to your new invoice. This completely eliminates the need to enter the line information manually. If it's not an invoice that is right for smart coding, you'll need to code the invoice manually. Fill out the fields of the line items table. Again, there will be lists, text, and amount fields for you to complete. You can tab your way through these fields, and if you keep tabbing to the end, it will automatically create a new line for you, which is needed for invoices with multiple lines. You can also press Add Line Item to add a new line to the bottom of your existing lines. If you want to add a row above or below a particular row that already exists, click on the existing row so that it is highlighted, then choose Edit and pick the correct Add option. To delete one or more rows, select the rows you want to delete by holding down Control while you click rows with your mouse. Then press the Edit button and select Delete. You will need to confirm you want to delete the highlighted rows. If you need to split one row into multiple rows by a certain percentage or a certain number of equal parts, then we suggest you use our Split Rows button. To do this, select the row with the dollar amount you want to split and choose Edit, and this time select Split Rows. The first option is to split the row by a series of percentages. For example, I want to split the original row into three line items. The first line I want to be 50% of the original, and the second and third I want to be 25%, thus making up the total 100%. If you select Copy Coding Details, it will copy the coding information you entered on the original line to each of the new line items. 
The second option is to split the row by equal parts. For example, I want to split this row into four equal parts. So I select the row, then press Edit and Split, and choose Equal Parts. This time, I'm not going to copy the coding details. Now, when I press Apply, I have four new lines without coding details, but with four equal subtotal and tax values. Beanworks will round totals when required. The next thing you may want to do to your invoice is to work with the invoice images. The Add Pages option allows you to add extra pages to the invoice. A good example of when you need to do this is when you have an important email thread you have PDF'd to add to this particular invoice. You have two options here to add pages. You can add them to the invoice or as backup pages. A telephone bill is a good example of when you want to add pages as backup. You have the main invoice page plus a lot of pages with call records. Your call records pages would be placed in backup. This comes in really handy further down the line when you're generating a PDF report of the invoice. You can specify if you want to include the backup pages or not, so your report is clear and concise. You can always move pages from backup to the invoice or back again if needed by dragging the page or pages you have selected. It's important to remember that pressing the control button on your keyboard while you select pages will allow you to select multiple pages to do an action to. You may want to rotate one or more pages, reorder them, or even delete a page or two. This all happens by selecting them and then using the rotate or delete buttons or by dragging and dropping the pages. If you need the page you're deleting again for another invoice or to make it into its own invoice, make sure to press Move to Workspace on the pop-up that appears. The final thing to remember when working with images is to save using one of the save buttons whenever you're done making your changes to images so that everything you've done is permanently saved. If you want to download a PDF of the invoice without any coding information, press the handy PDF button. At this point, you're likely finished working with the invoice. You have three options. The most common is to submit the invoice for approval. The invoice is now in PA status and will go to the appropriate staff members for approval and the next invoice will load. Another option is that you have a partially completed invoice and you want to save the invoice to work on later. We can easily do that by pressing the Save button, which leaves the invoice in the current status in the In Progress tab. The final option is that you have completed your work on the invoice, but you need to send it to someone else for them to complete or work on. In this case, you can write a comment if you need to let the person know why you are sending it to them. And then you simply click into the Owner drop-down field and reassign the invoice to them. The invoice is now in that user's In Progress tab, and they'll be emailed that they need to work on that invoice. Okay, that completes our lesson on coding invoices, so make sure you go and practice everything you just learned. Thank you for taking the time to watch this training lesson. If you have any questions, please contact Beanworks Support at support at beanworks.com.